kind of motivating factors are you looking for this week with the last week of the season, playing Pitt State, everything going on? I mean, it's just our last game of the year. Um, that should motivate you enough to have a great week of practice, you know, really preparing and getting yourself ready for this game. Um, getting in the film room, you know, getting with your buddies and, and watching film and going through game plans. And to me, that's it. I mean, this is this is the last run for about 16 of these guys on this team right now. And, uh, you know, you think you want to go out and show out your you – know, and show your skills this, this very last game of the year and, and make the most of it. And, I mean, that's it. This is it. This is the final game of the season. And – and then it's on to getting back to the weight room and, and individual drills and morning runs and all those things. So I think there'd be some excitement, some enthusiasm, um, and just the willing to really compete and, and get after it this week. Let's talk about the, the win on Saturday and, and expect that to maybe give you a little bit of momentum going into this one to, to come away with a W. I think so. And just, you know, us watching film with the kids and going through all the mistakes that we had and, uh, you know, just correcting those things. If we correct a lot of this, the stupid penalties and lack of focus sometimes, I, I mean, this team could be really, really good. I mean, I know we're young, got a lot of young kids playing, but, you know, we got to eliminate the, the unsportsman likes, the, the, you know, personal fouls, the, you know, late hit out of bounds and then, you know, just, just the, the, the bad snap and then dropping a couple of balls and, you know, just all these little different things that that lead to uh, us not performing well and, and really putting a damper on a game where if they just do things the right way, you know, a lot of things would be different. But it's it, – I'm, I'm excited about these kids so we just to see what they do, especially, you know, we're, we're going to go ahead and let – put Ted back in the lineup and, and put Chris back in the lineup and put Thule back in the lineup because, I mean, Pitt State's a good football team. They're big, physical, and fast up front, and we're going to have some big bodies, you know, to play with that. But, you know, I just, I just want to see what these kids do. You know, I, I know what's in there somewhere. We just got to get those things cleaned up and, and play better this week. Just the, I mean, we finally got a bounce. You know, we finally had something go our way, you know, from once. And even that really, even another pump before that, you know, Hunter made a great play at the goal line to, to keep it from going into the end zone when, you know, our guys didn't do exactly what they were supposed to do, but he was smart enough to go see it where it was bouncing and keep it in bounds. But, you know, that's just a kid starting to celebrate too early, you know, and the ball slipped out of his hands. But a great job by Jack Howman to continue to play hard. And, you know, another young kid that's on the field right now playing hard and trying to make plays of, of hustling and, and getting that ball, you know, away from that kid there towards the end. I don't know if what would happen. I mean, I haven't been to that point yet. I mean, I just try to – we try to teach those things before it happens. Uh, we always try to tell the kids to finish the play before it's over. And, uh, and and hopefully that's enough to let them know to make sure you get to the end zone before you decide to, to do any type of celebration at all. I mean, Cure's a good example on his touchdown. You know, he kind of just one-handed it as he walked into the end zone. And, uh, you know, we, I told him, great job on the touchdown, but make sure we tuck that ball next time before we get to the end zone because you never know who's around. So we're always trying to coach those things, you know, during practice, during the game. Um, even Dawson, you know, when, when he scored his touchdown at the end, yeah, he got caught, one-handed it across the end zone, but it's more like let's keep two hands on the ball and reach for the end zone so we're less likely to fumble because in that situation, if the ball does get knocked out, rolls into the end zone, it's just a touchback, you know, and we get no points out of it. So every opportunity that we get to coach these young men, you know, we're going to do it, whether it's something another team does or it's something that we do to, to make sure that we improve our football team. You know, just, just reflect back on the season and, and how everything went, you know. Um, was it the effort? Was it the strength? Was it the the preparation in the summer? Um, was it, you know, the prepar you know, just preparing, you know, during game week? 
Um, was it the accountability that, that wasn't being held, you know, across our team, you know, amongst the older guys, letting guys get away with things? Um, was it was a way, you know, that some of the old guys handled situations, you know, maybe even through the summer. And, you know, what can they do to make sure that this doesn't happen again? I mean, it sounds like a broken record because I said the same thing, you know, last year to the to this same group. But to me, it's, you know, just it's the accountability part of it, of our kids truly holding each other accountable. Um, I know there's internships and all those different type of things that, that happen in this summer these kids are trying to get to and do, but, you know, I truly feel like some of those kids can find those opportunities, you know, here in Hayes, Kansas, if they truly ask for it. And, uh, you know, the sacrifice it takes to be a winning football team. Um, it's, it's not easy to win in this conference, first of all, um, but to win, I mean, you're truly going to sacrifice, you know, some time at home with family and, you know, devout your time, devote your time to this team. And, and what you do this summer and, uh, you know, is it the seven on sevens? Are you truly competing at the seven on seven and not doing the things we're asking you to do? Um, are you doing little extra things, you know, outside of the weight room and seven on seven to make yourself better? And it's, it's really just kind of putting all the ball back on them. You know, what can they do? You know, we're going to give them the plan of what we want them to do. Um, it's just them carrying out the plan, you know, through spring and, and through summer. And if they do those things properly and make sure guys are here and, and let, not let guys cut corners, you know, I really think great things can happen for these young men. And I think they've seen enough of it already that, you know, that I think it's opened their eyes a little bit that, hey, we, we can't do these things that some of these guys have been doing. So, I mean, no knock on those older guys because they've done a lot for our program. They've won a lot of football games. But, you know, the last two years have just really kind of seen more lack of discipline and lack of accountability than anything else. Kind of on, you know, evaluating – what do you guys on the staff evaluate the season and, and, and how you plan to go forward? And, and how, how does that look? What do, you, what, what do you do as a coach and what do you guys do as a staff to evaluate and you know, adjust and make any changes you feel necessary? Uh, about a month ago, we've already kind of started sitting down. Probably even before that, you know, we've always sit down and just kind of talk each week about okay, what do we need? And then we have an injury and then, okay, this kid's not going to come back and or we lose this kid and, okay, this kid's graduating and, you know, looking towards, you know, what do we need for future? Um, is it running backs? Is it tight ends? Is it is it O linemen? Is it D linemen? Is it secondary guys? You know, and, and get a plan of recruiting ready right away because after the game on Saturday, we're going to be out Monday already. Some guys are going to leave from the game Saturday, go travel to where they need to get to to go recruit. Um, what things can we do better? You know, in in the in the meeting room, is it is it how we're teaching them? Is it we're not, are we not drawing it up properly? Is our communication, you know, not where it needs to be with the young man? What words are not getting across to him at? How do we change that? Is it the way we practice? Is it the way we lift? You know, just just all those things. Are we not holding them accountable enough as coaches ourselves? Um, and, and just how can we reach these kids better? You know, and you know, as coaches, we're always doing those things in meetings right now. Every day before meetings, I ask them, "Hey, we need anything we need to talk about and go through." And they'll all bring some ideas up. Some other coaches will bring some ideas up. And you know, the one thing I did recognize is, you know, if kids, there's been a lot of kids missing things. You know, whether it's weights or showing up late to weights or not getting their study hall hours in. And so we've, you know, added a few, you know, discipline things for that. Chop, of course, is what we call it. And uh, you know, those things have been minimized now since we did that. But it's. You know, it's just really holding them accountable and making them disciplined because, you know, if they're not doing those things, it's just hurting themselves and hurting this team. And uh, if you miss something, you got to make up for it somehow, some way. So since we've done our chop sessions, um, more kids have, have done things the right way. So, you know, we just need to continue doing that as well and kind of reflecting back on when I first got here, how do we do things to kind of build this program to get it to where it's at. And, uh, you know, those are the things we're going to start doing, really holding them accountable, making sure that they're at everything. Um, coming with, you know, a purpose to lift, a purpose to work out, a purpose to practice, and doing it with some intensity, you know, and and, and caring and, and really just getting after it. And so that's what we're looking for. And then, you know, really evaluating kids on whether they want to be here or not because it is hard work. You know, college football is tough. And uh, are you willing to do the things necessary for us to, to, to win? Um, if you're not, then maybe you need to find another place to go. Injuries is a big part of it, you know, when you have as many as that we had and, 
you know, with, you know, losing Chance and Bud Key and Lake and John. And, I mean, there's a number of other ones, you know, that were maybe not starters, but they're, they're rotational guys um, to give guys rest. And, uh, you know, and just us now have to play a bunch of young kids, you know, I think is the, is the big contributing factor. But also I think it goes to, you know, the number of players that we've had here, you know, in the summer of the last two years, you know, 17, 18. And I know our kids get so tired of me talking about 17 and 18. But 17 and 18, we had, you know, 80 to 90 kids here in the summer, and probably 60 to 50 of those kids were here every single day. Um, the last two years, we've probably had numbers around 40 to 50 kids, and I think this last summer we had 12 guys that, that made it every single day. Um, I think that's the biggest part of it, because you talk about injuries and things like that, if your body's not conditioned and properly trained, you know, for fall camp and then for a season, you know, those injuries are going to happen. And uh, so I think that's the main contributor of it. And, and then young kids playing and there's plays to be made. And I think it's just a bunch of stupid mistakes that we've made, whether it's turn over the ball, giving up big plays, missing tackles, um, stupid penalties, you know, of course, or, you know, just, just little things like that have contributed to this whole thing that we have to get fixed, you know, right away once the season's over. State football has gotten that because of the last two seasons there is disappointment and, and there is an expectation of, of, of this program? Yeah, there is. You know, it is, it is for this last two seasons are very disappointing to me. Um, 2019, we were 8 and 3, or that, that still was a disappointing season, you know, to me because of where we've gotten to. And I understand this conference is tough. And I mean, you look at Emporia, what were they, 5 and 6 last year, maybe, and now they're sitting here at 8 and 2, maybe could be 8 and 3 or 9 and 2 and getting into the playoffs. So it's just one of those conferences that's very tough. But to me, this is very disappointing because there's some things I thought we, we really could have done with the guys that we had, you know, especially on offense with a lot of returners on the offensive line, you know. Um, a returning tight end, a returning wide receiver, a returning quarterback, a returning running back. You know, I thought we were really going to do some great things offensively, and all of a sudden that thing just kind of kind of went away with injuries and, and guys not stepping up to the challenge and playing and, and guys not being here in the summer putting in the time to, to make sure that they were ready to play. And then, you know, I knew our defense was going to be young and, and kind of un, inexperienced, uh, but again, we had to release some kids because of of the prior year and you know that did hurt a little bit and trying to replace them and get those other kids in here that weren't quite ready yet but I knew it was going to be kind of an inexperienced defense but I think they've done some great things you know defensively as well it's just we're, we're very inexperienced across the board so I'm just hoping this our kids feel this and they know that you know we want to win and we want to get better what is it going to take for you guys to do that and are you willing to sacrifice you know your time and energy you know, to make sure that this doesn't happen. Even though we talk to them about this all the time, they still got to make the choice whether they're going to make the the right choice to, to do the things necessary to, to win ball games. Do you change the way you recruit as far as how many freshmen versus how many JUCOs or transfer portal, or is it still the same process? Um, I think right now, you know, we're going to really hit – we have to find some guys right now that, are, that can come in and, and, and make an impact you know, and help us play. I know these, a lot of these freshmen have played and they've got some experience, but are they still ready? I mean, a junior college kid that's played two years in a row has, has gotten a lot of experience. I'm a kid that's in the portal and, you know, has played some, but is maybe backing up a guy that they'll never see the field, you know, as a kid we'll try to look at as well. But, you know, we're going to try to fill some holes and we're going to try to bring in as many kids as we possibly can, you know, to help get this corrected. Um, just sometimes you can't bring too many outsiders, you know, um, because you never know what their culture is that they're coming from or, or their character as well. And you can have too many bad characters or bad culture kids come into a program and, 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 and ruin it. Because I do think our culture is going to change, you know, after, after this week. And just because of the kids that we have here, um, you can see their attitudes and just, you know, coaches walking around. We always got our ears open and just hearing, you know, some of the, the, what these young kids are saying and how they're going to do things now. Saying and doing is two different things. Hopefully they do the do part and not just say. Big State, let's make that. I mean, obviously they've been good, but what's been the difference? Can you tell this year, the season they're having? You know, you can tell. You know, brand new coach, you know, got here a couple years ago. Um, now they're understanding the system, you know, of offense and defense. Um, they're very talented. I mean, 
you know, when you look at their defensive line, their D tackles are pretty big guys, but their defensive ends aren't. But they play fast, they play hard, and they play explosive. Um, and they just try to create havoc. Um, their linebackers, you know, are smart kids that that can run sideline to sideline and are very physical. And their secondary guys are do a great job in coverage of getting hands on receivers, um, not really giving you any holes. And you know, I think that's just them learning their system and and you know actually executing the call. You know that is being called, um, where sometimes I feel like we don't do those things. And then offensively, I mean, it's just sound. I mean, they're very sound with their run game. They're very sound in the pass game. The quarterback runs well enough to get himself out of trouble. Um, they do do some quarterback run game with him as well, and he's smart enough to know when to get down so he doesn't take a shot, you know. Um, very good wide receivers too, but they're just a, a solid football team, and, and they play fast, and they play hard, and they play physical. And uh, you can tell they're out there to win the ball game. Um, whereas sometimes I feel like we're out there just to kind of fill things out and then trying to react to see how the game's going to go. You know, and you know they're a team that's going to attack and be aggressive and be and, and just get after you. And that's the same thing that we need to do this week is is go attack instead of just letting things come to us. We need to start attacking things and getting after people instead of just filling these games out. I'm thinking and hoping that with the kids that we've played this year and the number of young kids that we've played this year, you know, that it will be pretty quick. Um, I'm not saying we're going to be an undefeated team next year by any means, but I'm hoping we can at least be a, you know, a six and five, seven and four, you know, type team because we are still going to be very, very young, you know, across the board. And uh, I'm just hoping that what these kids have experienced these last, you know, few weeks of, of playing a lot is, you know, they have to get stronger, they have to get faster they have to you know get better feet we got to be better with our hip explosion you know and all these little different things you know that accumulate to you being a winner and you being successful um so you know I, i'm hoping it's faster than than what it took when i first got here but it really didn't take that long you know we went from you know four and seven to five and six to six and five pretty quick and then to eight and two eight and four seasons and all of a sudden we're, we're conference champions i'm hope it's it doesn't take five years i'm ta hoping it only takes you know one or two, and I hope this is the year one, and then next year is two, you know, is what I'm hoping for. But with a group of young men I got, I think they're good character kids. Um, I think they do things the right way. Um, I know that some of the incoming freshmen still need to kind of learn how things really truly work here and the culture that we are trying to to establish here, you know, with this team. And first part of it is being committed, you know. Are these kids truly committed, you know, to the process of, of being great? Are they going to work hard? you know, continuously every single day, you know, to make sure that this team is going to be great and are they going to hold each other accountable? And I think that's the hardest thing in the world for young men to do right now is to hold each other accountable and not let guys cut corners or let, not let guys, you know, miss things. And it's okay. You know, those are the things that, you know, we really need to focus on and then take true ownership of this team and, and make sure it's the best possible Florida State Tiger team that we can make it. Um, chance, well, chance is done. I mean, it's just, it's sad for him. Um, just can't. I mean, can't quite get over the injuries that that he sustained. You know, throughout the season with you know multiple ones, and just one leading to another. Um, the one, last one was just very unfortunate. And we just can't get it to heal up the way we need it to properly. Um, I think the other two, Jack and Ethan, have done a great job of of managing football games. I mean, they're still freshmen and they're still learning. You know, the speed of the game. Um, all the different looks that they're going to get. Because you know, in high school, you don't get a ton of looks. You know, from our defense, you do in practice. But <clears throat> if you make a mistake in practice, that doesn't really hurt you like game time situation does. So it's just them, <clears throat> excuse me, maturing and growing and, and learning our system even better and, and, and really watching, you know, through the summer, not just, you know, our defense, but actually getting in and watching 
Pitt State defense, Northwest defense, and point, I mean, just watching all of our opponents and their defense and, and what they're actually trying to do to us so that when we get to that point, you, you've already got a head start on, on preparing for those young men. But, you know, we do have a young freshman, Caleb Peter, that's already here that I think can, can do some great things for us. But every year you've got to sign a very good quarterback because you just don't know, you know, what can happen. It's like the chance situation here. What if, well, now what if Jack went down too, and now it's just Ethan, you know what I mean? So we've got to find as many quarterbacks as we possibly can, so we will bring in another one, you know, this – this year and uh, you know it's going to be another good quarterback that hopefully can compete and, and and push for that spot but that we want that at all positions we want guys to have to compete so we're going to bring guys in that and we feel can make an impact right away and if you want to keep your job you better compete and get after it this spring and in practices um, so that you are the guy that's you know that's playing next year that's what i was wondering if, it, if you're thinking uh, of a Bell middle quarterback or somebody that could possibly see the field right away um, probably more of a freshman, unless there's just some stud Division One transfer. Because I think Jack and Ethan both have it. I think Caleb Hevner, you know, has the potential to be really, really good. Um, but you know, right now, I think we're probably just going to try to roll with those those three guys. And then Samrad's a very good quarterback as well. I mean, he does some good things that you know is very impressive too in practice. So I really truly think we got four guys that are that have the potential to really lead this team to a, to a championship and and win a lot of ball games. Um, but you know, you always gonna be looking for that next guy. But can't just be the quarterback position. So we gotta do that at all positions. You know, with the running back. You know, we're looking for a couple guys. You know, a transfer at least to come in and and compete for the starting job. And you know, wide receivers the same thing. Bring some guys in just to compete for jobs. But it's all about the competition. You know, we gotta get guys in here to compete. You know, daily for that spot and and not just being satisfied or being handed. You know, the keys to the car and playing. And so. We just got to find ways to get guys in here that can compete right away and push these guys a little bit more.